So, in today's lecture, we take up the new unit operation adsorption. All right. So, first we started with absorption, then we had distillation, then we moved on to extraction, which was the last topic, and now we will take up this new unit operation adsorption. Now, you must have noticed by now that there is some similarity in all these unit operations, and there is a difference as far as mechanism is concerned of mechanism of separation. So, for example, now we started with absorption. So, we had two phase liquid vapor and there was one transferring component. Okay. Then, we switched to this distillation. There, we had two phases liquid and vapor, but we had two components at least A, B and then one stream, one we had purer A and another stream we had purer B. Then, we started with extractions. So, there we had three components A, B, C and two phases and then we had separation of these three phases, three, uh, these three components or distribution of these three components in two phases. So, as far as uh, similarity is concerned, you must have noticed that there are at least two phases right? and then there is a transferring component or more than one transferring component. Okay? So, there is a similarity and there is a uh, difference in the mechanism of separation. Okay. Now, similarly as far as operation is concerned, you know from the practical point of view, we said that we can have a continuous contact process or we can have stage wise. Okay. So, here also you know when we take up this new topic at job options, now we have two phases and there will be a transferring component or at least one transferring component. So, we can also have multi phase multi components at job options. That is also possible. For this course, for simplicity purpose, we uh, restrict our discussion to single component adsorption. So, we have two phases, one transferring component. So, there is a similarity all right. and there is a difference. The difference will be in the mechanism, what causes adsorptions or the, the mechanism of separation here is by adsorptions, not absorption, not by you know miscibility or difference in the solubility as we saw in case of extractions or not by relative volatility, which we saw in case of distillations. Okay. So, adsorptions again um, if you, you can recall from your previous knowledges, it is not a new unit operations. For a long time people used say activated charcoal carbon right, in water purifications. So, we had waste water or say ground water may be enriched with certain undesirable species say for example, say color. So, charcoal is very good known adsorbent for color. So, take waste water, bring in contact with solids like charcoals, coals etcetera, allow them to give some time. So, we say that there is an equilibrium like in all the previous unit operations. You have to give some batch time, some equilibrium time. Then the two phases, now they are in equilibrium. So, the component which is supposed to be transferred from waste water or from ground water or from potable water to the solid surface, it comes to an equilibrium thermodynamic equilibrium. Okay. So, there is a similarity that we have two phases, say we have liquid or gas one phase and then we have solid second phase. So, two phases and then we have one transferring components. We said that we can have more than one component, we can have multi, multiple component systems. So, for a simplicity if you have one component, this component gets transferred from liquid or gas to the solid phase and depending upon the activity partial pressure concentration in one phase the system reaches equilibrium that means no more this component can be you know thrown or can be sent to this solid surface solid phase concentration has reached an equilibrium with the liquid or gas phase concentrations so we have thermodynamics very similar to the previous cases y versus x for distillation for solubility or for absorption, we say solubility versus you know, partial pressure, concentration in the liquid phase versus gaseous phase concentration. We talked about extractions, we had solubility of three uh, different components, different solubilities that causes different extent, extent of distribution in two phases. So, similarly here we have thermodynamics which will tell us that given this partial pressure, how much is the amount of solute which is going to be adsorbed, which is going to be uptake by this solid. So, there is a similarity and of course, it is a totally new process. Here, we have a different mechanism. We will talk about the adsorptions, surface adsorption, we will talk about pore diffusion, we will talk about adsorption, desorptions etcetera. Okay. 
So, there is always in all this minute operations which we had, there is a similarity and there is a difference here. Okay, adsorption in the recent times has gained a lot of importance. Why? Because of you know, I recall in the first lecture also we said that because of air pollution, environmental concern. So, all these flue gases from power plants, from you know chemical industries, now the tolerance has gone down, you know, very strict. Uh, emission rule by EPA, Environmental Protection Agencies, or the similar Indian government agencies. Okay, so now concentration of sulfur dioxide emitted from say power plants cannot exceed say more than 500 ppm. Cannot be more than 200 ppm. So that's norm. So what are the techniques? One technique already we have discussed absorption. That's a very good methods. Take this flue gas, bring in contact with a good solvent, water, sulfuric acid, and then you have this mechanism of different solubilities. So, sulfur dioxide is more soluble in water than say oxygen, nitrogen or air. So, that is a mechanism of solubility. Adsorption is a very good technique. You bring in contact with the solvent, with the uh, solid, the adsorbent we will call it later. And then there will be uptake of the solid for the sulfur dioxide. So, it is a different unit operation, different mechanism. Recent times you have seen, may have heard of uh, new materials like carbon nanotubes, maybe zeolites carbon molecular sieves. So, these are uh, new type of adsorbents, alumina you know or tailored modified surface functionalized alumina. So, different type of uh, adsorbents you have solid we have, we have which have come you know which have been developed in the last one decade or so. Okay. So, adsorption has gained a lot of importance in the last decade because of this environmental pollution. So, we continue with this uh, need unit operation adsorption and we will have a similar approach some introductory you know uh, slides or lectures then we will switch to this thermodynamic we will establish a thermodynamic we will have to do some experiments to establish this thermodynamics then uh, we have this batch mode we will talk about the stages first stage second stage multi stages here we will talk about the packed column uh, breakthrough experiments pressure swing edge options okay operations okay so let's start uh, make a note of um, a few uh, you know few contents we had here so, we are beginning with new unit operation which is adsorption. Okay, so, let us not note down. We said we started with absorption. So, we have liquid plus gas. So, notice here two phases and there is a transferring component let us say C. So, we are talking of say A plus C water and you know sulfur dioxide and we have this air and C. So, C is the transferring components, but we have two phases. Okay. Distillation, maybe here we can put some mechanism. So, what is the mechanism of absorption? This is solubility. All right. Distillations, here also we have two phases, liquid plus vapor. Okay. And here we are talking of two components, minimum two components A plus B. So, liquid phase also has A plus B, vapor phase also has A plus B, except in one case A is larger, other case B is larger. What is the mechanism of separation here in distillation? This is relative volatility. All right. Then we have this extraction then we discuss extraction or we call it LLE liquid liquid extraction. Here also we have two phases L plus L. So, when we write like this both are liquids, but they are immiscible liquids. So, we have two phases we call them extract and raffinate etcetera and we had you know in principle three components A plus B plus C. So, both phases contained all three A, B, C, A, B, C of course, in different proportions. One became the solute, one became the feed, one became the solvent. We call them one as extract phase, we call one of them as a raffinate phase. What is the mechanism here? Again, it is a difference in solubility, distributions. So, different, different mechanism. Okay. The one we are going to take up today is adsorption. So, here also we have two phases, gas or liquid. So, one phase and we bring in contact with S solid. And here we have one component C, we can have more than one components, but
but uh, for simplicity, it is one component which is getting transferred, which is getting distributed in the C and C here. So, we have gas or liquid phase concentration, gas or liquid phase concentration and here we have solid phase concentration. All right. So, here maybe we are talking in terms of milligram per liter, we can also express in terms of partial pressure. So, maybe mole fraction into total pressure or we can talk in terms of ppm part per million. All right. So, this is gas or liquid phase concentrations and what we have here is a solid phase concentration. How much the C milligram per gram of solid. So, this is your solid phase milligram of C adsorbed in this solid phase. So, talking of these nomenclatures in adsorptions, you know it is you have say the first you know very common nomenclatures or terminology we use adsorbent, adsorbent, adsorber. You know, of course, we have this adsorption. So, this adsorption is nothing but unit operation similar to distillation, extraction, absorption it is physical phenomena, it is a physical phenomena. What is adsorbate? This is a solute, the transferring component. All right. So, the solute gets adsorbed. What is adsorbent? Similar to the solvent. So, this would be your, so the, some, so this adsorbent here, solute which is getting transferred, and adsorbent is your solid material. So, this solute is dissolved in the liquid or in the gas phase, aqueous system, for example, or the gaseous phase. And adsorbent, this is solid materials. So, adsorbent is going to be adsorbed by this adsorbent or by suitable job, one has to develop this material to adsorb this, just like one has to de develop certain solvent to uh, solubilize or to dissolve certain contaminants. Adsorber, this is the unit, it is an equipment. So, it is an equipment, some physical unit in which you are going to carry out this adsorption. So, these are the words, terminology, adsorbent, adsorbent, adsorber adsorptions, we say adsorptive removal or adsorptive separation. So, we mean here adsorptive. So, here we mean the same thing and that separation is carried or is caused by this adsorption, which is physical phenomenon. All right. So, let us uh, continue with the topic here adsorptions, what it is? In general, the traditional definition, this is a surface phenomena. Okay. Unlike when we say absorption, which we have discussed as a first unit operation in this course, this is bulk phenomena or bulk effect. So, essentially when we have this gas phase, liquid phase, say ammonia, this gets solubilized on the surface gas liquid and then it diffuses, moves inward into this bulk phase. In other words, this ammonia does not remain confined, does not remain confined in this, in, on this interface, on interface. So, it says adsorptions. When we say adsorption, we say it is a surface phenomenon. That means, if you take this solid, which is again our adsorbent here, we will take up an example of, you know, for the time being just some solid, say charcoal, coals, bring in contact with gas, 
or liquid say air or water it contains certain solute contaminant which you want to separate or you want to recover certain solute which you want to recover from this phase so now this c a solute now this gets adsorbed so when we say adsorb we are trying to say that here this is remains confined on the surface this will be the very traditional definition for this adsorption we will see that uh, what we are trying to say here that this molecule it makes certain bonds with the surface molecule there is a bond with surface molecules this surface is adsorbent surface all right so when we said that this is a traditional a definition for adsorption as a surface phenomenon what we are trying to say here that there are certain materials or good number of materials in fact most of these materials they are say we call it porous all right so let's try to understand what we mean by the surface phenomenon and what do we mean by the absorption which is a bulk phenomenon so now the when the molecule gets in or it gets adsorbed on the surface now what happens these are the porous materials which has very large you know this pores very long pores which goes deep inside this solid things will be clear you know uh, as we continue on discussion on this adsorptions but uh, for the try, try to understand what we mean by this surface adsorptions or surface phenomena so now the solute is get adsorbed but there is a conduit some tract so it diffuses inside so there is a solid diffusion remember we talked of you know molecular diffusion when we took up this first course on this mass transfer we talked of diffusion by fick's law j equal to minus dm del c gradient now we are talking of this diffusion within the pores pores of this solid so now this solute c c c some of getting a job here on the surface bonded with the surface molecule some of them are getting diffused inside but when they diffuse inside the pores they still get adsorbed or bonded with the surface molecules so that's what we're trying to say that it's a surface phenomenon whether it happens on the surface so we can have say theoretically non porous non porous adsorbent non porous sol solid so here the molecules are getting a job on the top surface because it's non porous there are no conduits like this there are no pores like this but if you have pores tracts like this these molecules they will diffuse inside but still they will get a job like this on the surface so whether it happens on the top external surface or it happens internal surface internal or it happens external the molecules are getting bonded on the surface that's their adsorptions certain force certain you know interaction between the molecule and the molecule of the solid whether on the top external or whether at inside on the pores So even here, these are the pores. These are the molecules of solids with which this is making a bond. All right. So you should understand whether internal or whether external. It's a surface phenomenon. All right. Of course, uh, further we're getting into details. We can have you know all kinds of another effects like surface diffusion. Just like we talked of pore diffusion. molecular diffusion right molecular diffusion pore diffusion similarly we can have surface diffusion this a job molecule can also migrate on the surface so this would be like getting into further details of you know or maybe we have instead of pores we can have grains right if you had some course on material science there are certain defects in the materials on which is possible the third molecules which are adsorbed they are migrating 
they are migrating, they are hopping. So, all kinds of mechanism is there in the search options. At the end of the day, we are saying that we have liquid or gas, it contains certain solute, moles per liter for the liquid. For the gas phase, maybe we like to say ppm, parts per millions, volume by volume. Maybe we like to say, well, the parts air pressure is P atmosphere, which means we are talking of mole fraction into total pressure. Liquid or gas containing the C plus S. So, S is adsorbent. We will denote like this, then we have S dash C. You say adsorbed phase, or this is actually a solid phase. So, liquid phase, gas phase, it contains C, bring in contact with solid different phase. We talk in terms of adsorbed phase, which is nothing but solid has adsorbed, it has taken up some amount of C, whether on the surface, if it is a non porous or within this pores, if it is a porous material, right. We have S dash C, a molecule A plus S we have A dot S, right. So, different ways of representing this adsorptions, okay. Now, let us take some few example, you know some of you may be familiar, may have uh, you come across in some context. So, let us take example of certain adsorbents, solid. The first thing you know which will occur to us or you must have you know we talked about just now is charcoal. It is one of the material very primitive used for a long time for past several years, nothing but actually coal all right, or some form of carbon, you know different carbon has different type of allotropes, so, we are talking of charcoal here. Sometimes we call it activated carbon, that is a scientific name or if you want to bring certain scientific aspect into this, it is activated carbon. At some point of time, we will discuss what do we mean by activated carbon. So, charcoal, activated carbon, whether they are in PSC form or they are GSC powder. So, they are either in powdered form, powder, activated carbon or charcoal, or we have GSC granular. activated charcoal or activated carbon. So, this is one example and it very extensively used, we gave an example in water purification. Even today, may be different different form, may be different surface modification, but is extensively used and very efficiently for water purifications. In particular, decolorizations. So, color can be dyes etcetera can be easily removed by this coal, by the charcoal very good adsorbent for decolorizations. So, if you take certain amount of gram of solid, bring in contact with water, all right. This should be able to adsorb very large amount of milligram per gram. So, this water contains certain C, certain color, volatile organic compounds, it will get adsorbed and you can per gram of solid, one can remove very large amount of the C components. So, C milligram adsorb in 1 gram of solid, that is a solid phase adsorb phase we talked about. So, charcoal is one example. Another example which should come to your mind is alumina. Alumina is also very popular, very old, very common adsorbent used in adsorptions or in separation process. So, actually what we mean by alumina actually this is L 2 or 3, this will be the best uh, you know chemical formula for alumina, the closest. Of course, alumina will also have different forms and alumina will also be in forms of say granules, what could be in form of powders or pellets. So, we are talking of certain cylindrical pellets like this. One makes use of very you know, small 1 inch, half inch of pellets or may be beads. So, we are talking of some spherical beads. So, different different forms just like GSE, PSE we talk for charcoals, 
for alumina like pellets, beads, granules, etc. It is used very extensively in water purifications, especially to remove fluoride. So, a lot of part of the country it has very huge amount of fluoride or even arsenic. One can make use of this alumina to remove this. Of course, uh, those who are familiar uh, with the catalysis, alumina serves as a good support. Okay, so, maybe time permits, we will come to this and we will see what we mean by support. So, these are different applications, but whether supports or direct application in water purifications, uh, we have the similar mechanism, we have some solute which is getting adsorbed on this alumina. Okay. Silica gel, this is another common adsorbent, very extensively used to remove say moisture. Alumina can also adsorb large amount of moisture or say hydrocarbons or oil. So, silica gel you know we must have seen radius yellowish radius type of beads in purifiers and you have this gaseous stream you packed with this silica gel to remove moisture before this gas is fed to some say chemical reactor. So, silica gel is also very common at job ends. Another example which should come to your mind is zeolites. Zeolites have been used very extensively also in the past. As your lights is nothing but maybe calcium, aluminum, silicate. This is also a very common or very closest molecular formula, chemical formula for zeolites. Zeolites, uh, traditionally zeolites were used as molecular sieves. Okay, if you have heard of it, molecular sieves. Today's zeolites are very extensively used as add sorbents. So, maybe here we got an example of a material which has two different types of functions. So, same materials in one context we can use this as a molecular sieves, another context we can use them as adsorbents which is what we are discussing in this unit operation adsorption. So, we are talking of different mechanism, same material has capacity to adsorb or to remove certain solutes. Same materials or maybe certain tailoring modifications can act as molecular sieves. So, here molecular sieves again your maybe the knowledge from chemical process technology uh, they were used in very extensively today in air separations. So, these zeolites they act as a sieve which means larger molecules will be filtering here and small molecules will make waste. So, it is a sieving actions, here the mechanism is molecular sieving, sieving actions at molecular level. Here we are talking of adsorbents, mechanism is adsorptions, bond, they make bonds with this surface molecules. All right. So, zeolites as we said, uh, it has two functions, you know. Uh, sometimes use this as molecular sieves, sometimes same material can be used or by some modification they can be used as adsorbents. In this context uh, same if you recall or if you know uh, from your knowledge uh, some chemical process technology say some same carbon, carbon can act as an adsorbent. Just now we took the example adsorption, carbon can also be tailored modified to use as CMS carbon molecular sieves. So, just like, just like zeolites, carbon also has a role as carbon molecular sieves. Uh, this one can modify the pores of carbon, keep the large molecule outside oxygen, allow small molecules to filter through this. That is a saving action. All right. So, these are uh, the examples of common examples of adsorbents. We would like to still spend some couple of minutes here on carbons a very common, very popular. So, we are not talking of charcoals, we are talking of carbons of these days. Carbons for your informations, we have activated carbon fiber. It is 
now it is a relatively newer materials, maybe last 10, 20 years, we have heard a lot of, of activated carbon fibers used in so many applications, in adsorption, environmental pollutions, uh, development of certain sensors, activated carbon fibers, in materials strength as a composites. We also have CNT, carbon nanotubes, talking of nanotechnology, carbon also made has made a progress here, carbon nanotubes, carbon nanofibers, carbon nanofibers. So, here we are talking of graphitic certain structured layers of graphite, nanofibers may be they are disordered. All right, so, the example you know for your knowledge, uh, this carbon has uh, as old as maybe 1000 years old and as new as maybe you know current years, we had a lot of work on carbon nanotubes, carbon nanofibers as a part of this nanotechnology. Here also, this carbon CNT or CNF is used as an adsorbent. So, a lot of R and D works have gone or currently under progress development of CNF, development of CNT, developments of ACF as adjoints. All right. So, these are the examples. Now, let us start getting into the mechanism part or you know more details what is happening when we have this adsorption. Okay. So, first we said uh, generally we can have non porous adsorbent solid or we can have porous adsorbent. So, when we say non porous essentially we are saying that it is external surface or geometrical surface is responsible for adsorption. On the other hand when we say porous surface then we are saying the very huge amounts of pores exist inside which are responsible for this adsorption. We are talking of pores here it is non porous all right. So, whether non porous or porous we talk in terms of sites or active sites. So, we are saying that this is a surface on which there are sites which are actives to adsorb these molecules. So, when we say active, this could be active, of course, one is a chemically, they are very active. So, we are talking in terms of some chemical bonds, electrovalent bonds, covalent bonds they form. They can also be very active electronically, right. So, these are active sites. Of course, we cannot count the num numbers here, but one way of uh, representing all these active sites or sites for adsorption is meter square per gram. We call it you know area, surface area. So, 1 gram how many, what is the area which is responsible for adsorption. So, non porous of course, this would be for a spherical it would be 4 pi r square. For porous one has this 4 pi r square, you will see it is much smaller much and much, much, much smaller than internal surface area. So, what is a good guess for charcoal? Or you know made of carbons, this area, this could be as high as 3000 meter square per gram. So, 1 gram of charcoal as 3000 square meter of area responsible for adsorption. These are on which we will have not all of them, maybe some of them active sites. So, 3000 meter square per gram, right, 100 into 100, nearly that order of magnitudes. You can imagine 100 meter long, 100 meter width as that much of area has gone into 1 gram of charcoal. Alumina, we talked another very silica zeolites, you know, they also have very large surface area, maybe you can say as low as 1, as high as maybe 300 or 250 meter square per gram. 
all right. So, these are uh, we will come back to this again, we will take in details, but we are talking of now the surface area which is responsible for adsorptions and how do they adsorb? We talked of chemical bonds, electronic bonds, they are very active there. Let us discuss the process, let us have a process description. All right. So, what we do the most simplest example would be take a beaker, take a water tank. So, it has water, this water contains say certain amount of solute, say color, right, or certain organics, colors, dyes, are nothing but certain organics. So, it has certain milligram per liter. So, I have taken say V liter of water, it contains certain solutes. So, the concentration let us say it is C. Okay. So, we will give a name here C, some unit here say it has milligram per liter. So, liquid phase contains certain organics which concentration is milligram per liter. I bring in contact with solid charcoal. So, this is the adsorbent, okay. this organic is adsorbate, adsorbate, the solid charcoal is adsorbent. So, this has certain properties meter square per gram, certain x meter square per gram it has a surface area. So, I bring in contact, now I have this process adsorption, I start with let us say C initials NIT. So, this solutes which are there, they will get adsorbed, not necessarily on the external surface. Charcoals are very large porous materials, they have a very huge pores, all right. So, this they will diffuse inside, migrate inside by this pore diffusions. So, I start with certain concentrations C initial T equal to 0 naturally it will expect that C concentration of water phase will slowly slowly we get down C 1, C 2 and the solid phase concentrations which we said milligram per gram is going to increase. All right. So, this will decrease, this will increase till there will be an equilibrium when we say that C final. Now, the C final has come into equilibrium with C surface milligram per that is the thermodynamic we want to discuss, the way we discuss in case of absorption, distillation, extractions, we talked of y versus x. All right. Similarly, we have this equilibrium, which is q denoted milligram per gram and here you have c aqueous phase, which is milligram per liter. Certain final concentrations, I get one coordinate, it cannot adsorb more than this adsorption, it has a finite capacity. We said that it has 1000 square meter per gram, 1 gram has so much of surface area. So, a proportion to this area is going to adsorb that much milligram, I got one coordinate. I do want some other experiment, I start with different concentration, concentration comes down to final concentration, I get different level. So, I connect all this point to have my equilibrium. So, this is the equilibrium we are trying to establish with all the unit operations, absorption, distillation, extractions. Remember the first thing is that we have to address equilibrium, we have to develop this curve here. All right. So, this is the experiment, very simple experiment. If you have the liquid phase, you can do this. If you have the gas phase, very similar, you have to take maybe closed chambers, take this gas phase. So, you have certain partial pressure, P atmosphere to begin with, bring in contact with the solid sulfur dioxide, ammonia will get a job on or inside, partial pressure will decrease, you will reach P final, corresponding to this P final there will be an equilibrium in the solid, you have C equilibrium. One can also plot given this partial pressure, what coordinate I have got one equilibrium, which is C equilibrium or you call it Q one point, start with different partial pressure, you have different points, you can connect all this points here, you have another equilibrium. All right. So, this is what we are supposed to
construct or we are supposed to generate or we have to rely on thermodynamic in some physical thermodynamic and data book. So, that is the first thing thermodynamic equilibrium. So, again you know going back to that example a you know, very simple experiment uh, we are trying to say here that very similar to what we had in all into operations jobs on distillation extractions one has to construct one has to generate this equilibrium data or you have to rely on some previous data you know reported in the textbook or in some thermodynamic handbook. So, the experiment is very simple initial minus final whatever is the loss change in the concentration either gas phase or the liquid phase that material must have gone into the solid surface. So, you make a simple material balance to obtain or to generate such data let us do this small computation here all right. So, we are saying that we have this volume filled with the liquid let us say V liter. We started with C initial and after time T we have reached C final. So, when we say it has reached C final we must ensure that the concentrations of the solute in this liquid phase is not changing with time it has reached an equilibrium. So, maybe you have some sensor or you are taking a small amount of solute very small amount you are sending. So, if it is a color maybe you are sending it to some UV vis some equipment ultraviolet visible you know equipment it monitors the concentrations concentration changes then we have the CF we say that we have reached an equilibrium. To do this of course, we had this solid it took the W weight gram. So, what is the balance here V liter started with C initial minus C final which is say milligram or say moles per liter. So, so much milligrams of solid has gone from this liquid phase to the solid phase and we started with W gram of solid phase let us say now it has the concentrations Q. So, this is Q is often used for solid phase concentration. So, solid phase concentrations which is here milligram per gram. Okay. So, now we have V is fixed we start with C initial W is fixed here we monitor C final at the end after infinitely time long time very large time we have reached this number we calculate this Q from here Q is nothing but V C initial minus C final over W milligram per gram that is the unit of this Q. Start with different C initial you get different Q and then we plot this Q versus the C final. So, this adsorbed phase solid is in equilibrium with the C final not with C initial we started with C initial now we have reached C final. So, we get one point here start with the different C initials we have different points we have different points we connect we have very similar qualitatively data points like this we will call it isotherm. Why isotherm because one has to fix this temperature. So, temperature in this experiment was fixed at T say 30 degree centigrade we did this experiment we had put this in some kind of bath where the some thermostatic uh, temperature was fixed we got this point we change the C initial we got different points we construct this we have the C final milligram per gram here Q and this is your milligram per liter you can have this. If you do this experiment for the gas phase maybe you can plot as P partial pressure in atmosphere and here we can have Q you can have the similar curve like this certain data points like this this also known as isotherm. For the gas phase instead of P atmosphere maybe you can one can also plot milligram per cubic meter. So, it is a gas phase one can also plot parts per million volume basis etcetera. So, different ways here still maybe you can keep it milligram per gram. So, so much one gram of adsorbent 
has their job, so much milligram of ammonia or sulfur dioxide starting with different different parcel pressure or different different concentrations. C maybe you can write P over R T applying ideal gas. So, one can construct this Q here. So, this is all about batch experiment. For any system we want to study, we need this is the first thing one has to do. Just like in case of solubility, remember we talked of Y versus X for distillation, for solubility, parcel pressure versus C, some curve like this. For extractions, we talked of equilateral diagram like this, then we said there is a phase etcetera. So, this is also a phase diagram, solid phase and the gaseous phase or the liquid phase. So, this has to be generated, thermodynamically calculated, one has to refer to some work or if that type of information is not available, one has to do this experiment. There is another experiment, one can also do flow experiment. Let us spend time here to understand, uh, improve our concept, what is this flow experiment. So, this was the batch experiment we did, fixed amount of solid in fixed amount of the volume. Flow experiment, what we do? Let us say we make a column. So, this is a packed bed packed bed column, we pack it. So, we denote by this cross, all it means there are powders, granules, beads, pellets of all these adsorbents. So, we have packed it, it has certain length, it has certain diameter. there is a flow here q, let us say cubic meter per second. So, we water, let us simplest example, water, pure water, clean water, does not have any solute, flows through this at this constant flow rate, it gets in here and gets out here. This particle, let us say the size is dp, all right, we have put w amount of solid. So, batch experiment, we also put w here also we have put W amount, right, except there the Q was 0, there was no flow and everything was closed here, we brought in contact with this, uh, with water. Here we are bringing in contact with water, except there is a flow in and out. At certain time, let us say we put this tracer here. What is this tracer? This tracer is nothing but the color, just like we said in case of batch experiment, this water contains initially some C initial of color and dye, here we are saying that at certain time we bring in contact with water. So, we have injected this for and this water, we injected this color with this concentration level C in. Instead of C initial, we have C inlet, same milligram per liter, milligram per liter. We have W gram, we have W gram, we have those granules particles of D p, here also we have D p, here the flow was constant sorry, the flow was 0 here, here where there is a flow continuously in and out. What we will expect, that is more important to see what analogy, what is the difference between this batch experiment or the data from the batch experiment, what we have here and what is the, and what uh, between this and what we are going to get here. So, what you will expect, the bed was initially clean, no color here, now you inject this at certain time for a long time nothing will come out from this. You take a sample from here, it is a clean bed, slowly and slowly this is getting saturated with the color, there is an advancement, then you start seeing that bed, there is some amount of color here. Till after a long time you will see that or you will also expect that this will get entire bed is now saturated. Why? Because it has a limited capacity, just like here, there was an equilibrium when C initial got down to C final and, and after a long time this concentration does not change. So, that is an equilibrium. Here now there is an equilibrium here. What you will expect that this concentration is now same as C inlet, all right. So, in the beginning it is 0, slowly and slowly it will increase till this level becomes same as this level. Now, the bed has become saturated, no matter how much amount you use, whatever gets in leaves from here. Let us come back to this diagram again. So, this is a response. 
we are plotting the response at the outlet. Response at the outlet of the column or this back bed column. What we did in case of batch experiment, there also we, we could have monitored the time. With time, how does C concentration changes? So, there you start with C initial concentration changes, changes, decreases till it reaches C final. Then we did the calculations made the material balance to plot Q versus C final. All right. What we are doing here is, we are also plotting with the time, except we are plotting C exit, C exit, what we are monitoring at the exit. So, we said for a long time, we will not see any concentration here. Bed is clean, the wave has not reached at the exit, slowly and slowly this concentration will increase till the bed becomes saturated and this level has now reached C inlet. All right. So, we made a material balance under batch, here we should make a balance under flow conditions. How do we make? So, recall this, we draw this back bed here, we have response like this, step functions C inlet and we have this response here which we have plotted on this x and y. So, at a time t, let us take del t, concentration general is c, of course, it is changing with time. Okay. So, let us just make a material balance. So, we have this q, cubic meter per second of this water, it flows c inlet, let us say moles per liter or per cubic meter. So, what balance we have at any time? Q, which is cubic meter per second, multiplied by inlet, multiplied by C exit, which is continuously changing with time. So, we are making this balance at t, at, at a time t, we have taken a differential time of del t, over which we make this balance. So, d t integrate this 0 to t final. When we say this t final, it is equilibrium time after a long time, infinitely long time, when the concentration has reached the inlet and does not change, the entire bed is saturated. So, what is this amount here? Entire milligram per cubic meter, this is time here, this is time here per second. So, much milligram has a job gone from this liquid phase so much amount has absorbed, where it has gone, where it has gone into this solid phase. All this pack bed, which contains so many of granules, particles, they have absorbed. What is the amount here absorbed? That is W, total started with, you have W gram of this charcoal or beads and it is say capacity is now Q, that is a QE, which we plotted earlier also for batch experiment milligram per gram. So, Q is fixed, C inlet is fixed, C with time changes, we can calculate, we can do this integrations. This is nothing but, if you be careful, this is nothing but the area over this C inlet, area over this curve here, this is the response, this is the response. So, this is the area of take, we can calculate, we know the weight Q E, that is what we are looking for, how much amount milligram per gram has been absorbed over this uh, time T final or the equilibrium time is at integrations, this I over this W, that is milligram per gram here. All right. What we will expect that for that conditions? whatever C you have chosen, C inlet. With that C inlet, the Q which you have calculated from that area under the curve, this is number data is Q milligram per gram. This has to be same as what we obtained from the batch experiment, where we plotted C final and Q. 
this has to be same because in the batch or whether there is a flow uh, the material the adsorbent has come in, equi in equilibrium with the solutes. So, as long as you fix the same temperature right that is a batch experiment or it is a flow experiment. In the bed is saturated, it is saturated with the C inlet or here saturated with the C fire that is equilibrium. You get one data points, change the next experiment, take some other C inlet, check, take some other experiment C inlet, you plot these two curves is the same one and the same. So, that is because it is we are talking of thermo dynamic equilibrium that is your isotherm we call it one temperature. So, whether this is a batch must understanding in batch we start with C 1, C 2, C 3 decreases till we have C final and we have this q here equilibrium which we calculate flow experiment we do with c inlet wait till you have equilibrium we calculate your q this q versus c inlet must be same as this q versus c final change c inlet you have different q1 q2 different concentrations change different initial concentrations c1 prime you have different q prime the 2 1 batch experiment or the flow experiment must give you the same result which is your thermodynamic equilibrium one has to calculate the way we have done it with the simple experiments or one has to rely on some literature data somebody has already done for it. For different temperature you will get different isotherms. Maybe at higher temperature the capacity decreases at jobs and decreases some system is possible that at higher temperature capacity increases it is all possible exothermic endothermic we will discuss those. So, today's lecture what we have done, we have introduced this in new unit operations adsorptions. It has liquid gas one phase being in contact with the solid, there is a transfer, there is an equilibrium. And how do we approach? First, we characterize the samples, our adsorbents. It could be porous, it could be non porous. One has to do certain experiments, certain analytical techniques and are there to calculate how much is this B, how much is this surface area, meter square per gram then one has to do the thermodynamics. Thermodynamics either batch experiment or flow experiment. Batch experiment is relatively easier to do it, but it takes a long time right 12 hours maybe 24 hours to reach the equilibrium. So, one has to do this type of experiment to establish isotherm. This isotherm is very similar to y versus x for distillations or solubility versus P or Henry's law for absorption or for equilateral, equilateral diagram where we have this phase diagram for this extraction system. So, the approach is the same first establish your thermodynamic then you make some species balance mass balance or you talk in terms of stages first stage at jobber second stage at jobber or you have a continuous back bed you know uh, two different type of contactors. Okay. So, the next class when we meet uh, we take up this topic uh, for the stage wise or the continuous contactor.